everyone, my name is Andre and welcome back to another educational video from MedSchool EU and today we are going to talk about the ideal gas law. Now ideal gases are also part of the composition of matter unit uh, so I do want to address it and today I'm going to go over um, a little bit about the um, what are ideal gases, what are the what is the formula, what is the ideal gas um, formula and the equation that we're going to use um, <clears throat> and some of the uh, most common calculations that are involved uh, with the IMAT. An ideal gas has zero particle volume and there are no intermolecular forces of attraction. Now what does it mean? I mean like gases are still going to have intermolecular forces they are still going to have particle volume but why it's counted as an ideal gas is that the particle volume is so tiny and the intermolecular forces are so tiny that we consider them negligent and so therefore they're not going to be counted as part of the equations because if they are counted as part of the equations well then that's going to change everything and our ideal gas formula or ideal gas equation is simply not going to be accurate but the only reason it does turn out to be accurate is because we assume that the gases that are involved within our equation or the ones that we're calculating they have zero particle volume and no intermolecular forces between them now we can confidently say that volume is dependent on two primary factors and that is going to be um, temperature measured in Kelvin and pressure that's typically measured in Pascals or kilopascals. Now the pressure of gas, so if you're talking about gas that is in a confined container, right, and you have plenty of gases in the container, the pressure of gas, it, where, do, where does it come from? I mean, if you have a balloon, right, and you're squeezing down on the balloon, it's exerting a pressure against you, against your hands, as you're pushing it down. And eventually the balloon is gonna pop if you keep doing that. And the reason for that is because, it is, is because it's decreasing the volume, and when you're decreasing the volume, you're increasing the pressure. So they're gonna have an inverse relationship between. If you are decreasing pressure, you will increase volume and vice versa. And so uh, in terms of containers, where does pressure come from in terms of gases? They're not solids, right? They're not liquids. Where does the pressure come from? Well, the pressure of gases comes from the, the gas molecules colliding to the, uh, with, within their walls and other gas molecules within the container. That's what produces the pressure. Now, the ideal gas formula is PV equals NRT. So here, what we've got is P is, of course, pressure in um, ATM atmospheres or uh, kilopascals, depending on which units you're going to be using or which units are given. Uh, volume is going to be measured in liters. Uh, we're going to have N, that is number of moles. Um, R is going to be a constant and so the, the constant measure that we're going to typically use is probably going to be 0 0.0821 liters ATM over Kelvin times moles. So this is, this is the typical uh, constant that we're going to use. And a temperature will always, always, always be measured in Kelvin. Now, if you want to know a conversion between um, degrees Celsius to Kelvin, you would have to add 273 to get Kelvin. So sometimes on the IMAT, you will be given degrees in, in uh, Celsius, and you're going to have to convert them to Kelvin by just knowing this simple conversion. Now, I'm not sure how useful this is going to be for you, but uh, something to consider is that one atmospheric pressure uh, is going to be equal to 101.3 kilopascals. That is another unit of conversion. Now, another point of discussion here is that one mole of an ideal gas will take up 22.4 
liters of volume at STP. What does STP mean? It stands for standard temperature and pressure. And what that means is, is a standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin, and standard pressure is gonna be one ATM or 101.3 kilopascals. So when uh, you are given a question that states that a gas is at STP, you can make the assumption that the gas is an ideal gas and therefore you can use this uh, sort of conversion. So if it's asking you for the volume that the gas takes up, then you can use the conversion from moles to, to, to liters. Or if it's asking you for the moles, then you can make the conversion from volume to the moles using this same conversion. And this is something that's not given on the test, so I suggest you memorize it and, uh, and you use it and practice with it before writing the IMAT. So now here we're gonna get a chance to use our PV NRT formula. If a person exhaled 125 milliliters of carbon dioxide gas at 37 degrees Celsius and 0.95 ATM of pressure, what would this volume be at a colder temperature of 10 degrees Celsius and 0.9 ATM of pressure? So well, what I gather from here is we have two situ situations. The first situation gives us everything except for moles, except for N, uh, and the second situation uh, gives us just the pressure and the temperature. So what we're gonna have to do is basically find our number of moles so that then we can find the volume, the second volume that is uh, being measured. So we're gonna have to do PVNRT twice. So uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to convert the 37 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. That will be 310 Kelvin. That is the temperature that we begin with. So the formula is PV equals NRT. Now, in order to isolate for the moles, N is going to be PV over RT. And I'm not going to go over the math here right now uh, and, and how I got there. That's going to be something that will be dealt with the, with the math unit. So if you cannot do this basic conversion, I suggest you drop chemistry right now and you go do a little bit of basic algebra. So now we are going to substitute um, all of our variables in for the first situation. So our pressure is 0 0.950 uh, ATM. That will be multiplied by the volume. I'm going to convert the volume into liters. So that'll be 0 0.125 liters. Also, you're going to need to learn some basic unit conversions like milliliters to liters and degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Uh, possibly atmospheres uh, to uh, um, kilopascals. You're going to have to learn some basic unit conversions along the way. That will be over R. So our constant is going to be 0 0.0821 liters times ATM over Kelvin times mole. And that will be multiplied by 310 Kelvin in terms of temperature. So now I can cancel our units. Kelvin will cancel with Kelvin, liters with liters, atmospheres with atmospheres. And now because this is in the denominator of the denominator, we are gonna get our units as moles. So let's do the calculation here. So our answer is gonna be 4.67 times 10 to the negative three moles. And I would suggest you also learn how to convert from decimals to scientific notation uh, for the chemistry unit as well. Now I'm going to rearrange my formula to find uh, the new volume with the new temperature. So volume will equal NRT over P. This will now equal to 4.67 times 10 to the negative three moles that we calculated within our previous equation. R is gonna stay the same, 0 0.0821. Remember, it's a constant, so it remains the same. Our temperature is now going to be 10 degrees Celsius. So 10 degrees plus 273 is gonna be 283 Kelvin. All over new pressure of 0 0.900 ATM. Now let's do the cancellations. Atmospheres cancel with atmospheres. Our moles will cancel with moles, Kelvin will, will, with Kelvin, and we're left with 
liters on the numerator of the numerator? The answer is 0 0.12 liters. Next is going to be a little bit of stoichiometry and we're going to get into stoichiometry a little bit later um, in chemistry. But for now, since this involves uh, the ideal gases and the ideal gas equation, I figured I might as well bring it up. So the question is, what is the STP volume of 10 grams of methane gas? Again, I've mentioned this previously, STP stands for standard temperature and pressure which indicates to me that it is talking about an ideal gas. Therefore, I can use the conversion of one mole to the 22.4 liters of volume. It's asking for the volume. So again, what we're gonna have to do is uh, take 10 grams of methane gas and uh, turn it into moles and then turn it into our liters for the volume. So first, always start with what's given. I'm given grams and I need to get to liters of volume. I cannot go there directly. So what I'm going to have to do is convert it to moles because I'm going to know what the molar mass of methane is uh, by looking at the periodic table. And from moles, I'm going to be able to go into liters using that 22.4 conversion that we have at STP. So let's begin. We've got 10.0 grams of methane gas. Now the formula for methane gas, and this is something we're going to learn in organic chemistry, that is CH4. So now what we're going to have to do is use the periodic table to add up the molar mass of carbon and the molar masses of, of four hydrogens together. So carbon's molar mass is 12.011. We're going to add uh, 1.008, the molar mass of hydrogen, multiplied by 4. And our, our molar mass is going to be 16.043 grams per mole. So when I multiply, I'm going to have the grams in the denominator in order to cancel with the grams that were given. And I'm going to convert that into moles, one mole of CH4. This is molar mass. This is the, the reason I can convert that. Now the grams will cancel with the grams. We're left with moles. Great, but I need uh, volume. So I'm going to convert moles to volume uh, by doing the conversion of one mole of an ideal gas, that is CH4 gas, into 22.4 liters. So one mole of CH4 ideal gas at STP takes up 22.4 liters of volume. Now our moles are going to cancel and we're left with, with just the liters. So let's do the calculation here. And we're left with 13.96 liters of CH4 gas. So this concludes our first video and the first full topic covered in the chemistry section of the IMAT specifications. And uh, in the next lecture, we are gonna take a look at the atomic structure and we're gonna talk about atomic theory.